Not that you haven't addressed it thoroughly today, but but what's the significance of this? This is more than a renovation job. This is this is something much bigger, obviously. Yeah. Well, when when our team started here, uh, you know, three years ago, I think we set out to make sure that we were a highly valued member of the Atlantic Ten Conference and the Northeast Conference. And so, starting from that premise, when you look at our facilities um, where they are currently, you know, we needed we needed upgrade. And so we spent a lot of time thinking about the critical components that affect the student athlete, our competitiveness, our recruiting across the board. And so this is the culmination of a lot of thought. And then when you extend it into the community piece, our ability to impact the community around us, be part of the Uptown Development, the Eco Innovation District, it just kind of all came together. Um, and we're just blessed that we had so many people support the project. Dave, it almost looks like there are, from the photos, it almost looks like there's different buildings. What's kind of the layout going to be? Is yeah, it, it does kind of look like that. Yeah. So um, there's three distinct components. One will be obviously the, the UPMC Fieldhouse component, which is the whole building. Mm -hmm. But the, the, if you will, the playing area, our goal there was to create a really unique Division One college basketball atmosphere. We're tightening it up a little. Mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of internally saying make it angry. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're adding a lot of premium seat amenities and social opportunity amenities. Um, I think people are looking for more than just a game nowadays it's apparent um, and we wanted to make sure it was intimate that people could have a real good feel on the court uh, the middle part we wanted to make sure all those all those things that we do in terms of the administrative work you know the offices which really aren't as important as the things that hit the student athletes um, we always say that if it doesn't get you a player get you a win we're not spending the money the right way and so when we focus on player development and you know developing student athletes academically competitively those are the key features we really want to make sure are done in a gold level um, and then obviously we want to create more space uh, for student athletes to train year round uh, create more recreational space for students and so that's the third component of that which will be the the main back Rollo center is the back Rollo center sort of a that's more than just the basketball teams, right? I mean, you're going to be able to use that for a lot of the sports that'll on be, campus? That'll be for every team. Um, you know, in Pittsburgh, uh, we, we get a lot of, uh, especially for our spring sports, we get incremental weather where they can't hit the field. So we'll have that. And then during the evening in the winter, a lot of our students on campus don't have recreational space. So that'll allow it to be active, uh, a, a very active building. Um, and it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of that rising tide effect, if you will, that the more opportunities you have to train, the better you're going to be. You don't miss practices, you don't miss training opportunities because of weather so that's something that's critical for us. In so, terms of thinking big, uh, Ken Gorman talked about the, just the thought of thinking big and trying to go with this project. Was there any kind of you know, maybe bigger functions that maybe fell short or was this pretty much you were shooting for from the beginning? Well, um, so this is the first part of our facilities plan. So uh, we've, we've got opportunities with some of the other sports. Uh, we're looking at some, some different facilities that we can continue to enhance. So um, I, I would say we're very pleased with what we wanted to do um, here. We were able to get all the funding externally. Um, and I, I think we hit all the critical components that we felt uh, were needed to get to position us well in the conferences that we're a member of. People these days are used to corporate names being on facilities or major donor names being on facilities. But the honoring of, uh, of Mr. Cooper here, but your, your feelings about that and how that came together. Yeah, it was a, it was a really unique story. So uh, one of the original conversations I had with one of the donors was, um, can we, he asked, can we talk about Chuck Cooper? And I said, yeah. So I shared my story of seeing a little jersey in a back office and I said, let's, let's do it right. And then what was fascinating is as we talked to all the groups and especially UPMC, they had such a connection with the Cooper Foundation, obviously, um, that, that we kind of threw it together. And when you look at obviously UPMC, Rooney and Lemieux, um, we felt that in Pittsburgh, if there was an underrated name and an unknown name that needed to be out there, it was Chuck Cooper's. And and uh, when people hear the story, I, I think obviously it'll resonate that this is the well-deserved recognition that he should have. Do you have a seating total? Is the capacity going to be roughly the same? No, you know, we haven't done a manifest yet for the seating. Uh, it'll probably wind up roughly the same. Um, you know, we're, we're, we want to make sure that every seat's filled on here and you know we've got some unique aspects as you've probably seen in the drawings we have fan corners that hang over that are you know if you look at i call it in pittsburgh the standing room only phenomenon a lot of people never go to their seats they hang over a rail and they have their libation or their banners or whatever so we want to make sure it's really active there and then in the student section component we're going to have an activation in a corner there for them on a game basis so you really just want to enliven this and and if we're to a point where we're successful enough that we're selling this out and you know we'll take our big games next door because uh, you know ppg and the penguins are just fantastic partners for us.
Dave, when you were interviewing for this job, was there, was there a lot of talk, any talk about, about this project, or did you grow after you became the AD? I, I just simply asked them to open the door. Um, you know, I think there was some, some planning in, in place, but I think it, it needed recalibrated. Um, I asked them to let me go out and assess and see what's possible. We, we found out that there was some you know, initial interest on the project at a high level. Um, and then we just continued to go and as we went, um, the pace of it really surprised us. Uh, people were onboarded very quickly. Um, we, were, we were so blessed to have so many generous benefactors support us. Um, and, it, and it happened maybe a little quicker than we thought it would, but, but and obviously that's a good thing. So. Do you have a, you get a break around in March? Yeah, as, as soon as the Atlantic 10 Women's Basketball Championship is done, uh, uh, the staging areas will be set up, so it's going to go. And then part of our operation, um, we have to move everything. So this is a very challenging operation. We have to move our daily operations, athletic training, sports medicine, you know, strength and conditioning, on down the line. So we're going to move components of that during our breaks here in November and December back to house, which no one will see as we move over to some other facilities on campus. But, but uh, March is kind of the line in the sand where we're all out of here and the building will be vacant for you know the, the heavy construction. Do you expect to start the 2021 season in the new facility? So the, it'd be the 2021 season, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it.